everyone, it's me Roxanne, and I'm back with a brand new video featuring the Singer Quantum Stylist 9960. This is the video you have been waiting for. This is the video that everyone has been asking about. And today I'm going to show you, with the help of my husband, who's a mechanical technician, how to repair your auto cutter. So stay tuned. Before we get on to the actual repair, the first thing you need to do is to remove the foot pedal control as well as power. Next, go ahead and remove your extension table. Now remove your presser foot and also remove your needle. Go ahead and clip your top thread and pull it through down to where the needle is and remove your spool of thread. Remove your bobbin cover and your bobbin. Here is a page of your manual. Using the number seven tool, go ahead and remove your throat plate screws. Remove your throat plate and also remove your bobbin casing. If you get to this point and your machine looks like this with the bar going across and this cutting mechanism, this repair video is not going to be for you. This is my original 2011 Stinger Quantum Stylus 9960. And this is a mechanism that I've never had any trouble with. This is my new 2020 Singer Quantum Stylus 9960. And if your cutting mechanism looks like this, this repair video is for you. Up until now, everything I've done should be very familiar to you. None of this is out of the ordinary. But from here forward, everything I do will seem very unfamiliar. If you go through this whole video and you feel for any reason that this is beyond your capabilities, I caution you to stop now and do not attempt this repair. Here I am on the back side of the machine and this is the screw that you're going to loosen. Take a Phillips screwdriver and just loosen it, but not remove it. Now I'm going to take this side cover off. Put a little pressure down here and pull the cover off. Be very careful because you don't want to break this tab off. This is the screw that we will be loosening next using a number one Phillips screwdriver. Loosen that screw and take out this small top cover. This is the next screw that needs to be completely removed. It's under the top cover of the machine on the right hand side. Here I am under the top cover of the machine and this next screw will be loosened but not removed. So just go ahead and loosen it a little bit but not remove it. Here I am on the left side of the machine under the side panel that you removed and the next screw will be loosened and not removed. I'm going to zoom in slowly now so you can see which screw needs to be loosened. And that's it. Here I am on the back side free arm portion of the machine, and this is the screw that you will take out next. I'm using a Phillips screwdriver and this screw will need to be removed completely. 
At this point in the repair, you want to lay a towel down and lay your machine on its back to expose the bottom portion of the machine. In order to take the front cover off the entire machine, there are three screws that need to be removed to remove the underside plate. This screw on the right side of the machine needs to be removed completely, as well as these other two. Just take your time. You don't want to round anything out. Keep all of your screws nice and safe so they don't roll away and you don't misplace or lose any of them. Finish taking this screw out on the right. And then this whole bottom panel will come out. This next series of videos will be to remove the front, this whole front portion of the machine. And my husband is going to remove clip by clip so that you can see exactly the order in which it needs to be done. Press here in the back and pull out on the front. And there is your first clip. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see exactly what it looks like now that it's spread apart. The next portion that needs to be removed on the front cover needs to be pushed down where my husband's thumb is and the front portion needs to be pulled forward. You will separate a clip here and a clip down here. With the machine tilted back and my husband supporting it back there, he's pushing up inside the back part of the harp area and now he will pull off the front cover. Let me zoom in and you will see the clip that he separated right here. This is the final step in separating the front cover of the machine from the back cover of the machine. You'll want to press inward toward the machine where my husband's left thumb is, and then with his right hand, he's going to maneuver it out. And now it's separated. It's not necessary to completely remove the front cover from the machine, just as far as it's separated so that you can be working in this area. This is the cutting mechanism, and this is the portion that we're going to remove next. This is the screw that needs to come out completely. And then this area, by separating the back cover just a little bit, pull this mechanism out gently, and it will remain attached to these wires. This is the cutter assembly, and this is the screw that you're going to completely remove next. Hold everything in place so nothing falls out. And then you're going to remove this little piece from the mechanism. You will need to remove this next little piece to actually remove the blade. And roll it out and remove that. At this point, take the whole mechanism and turn it upside down. And I want you to focus on this area. Taking a small tweezer, push that in from the end and your cutting blade will come right out. 
this is what you're going to reinsert or you will be putting a new blade in. Now, since my machine is brand new, I will be reinserting the same cutter as I just took out. But if your cutter is broken or have, has fallen out and you've lost it, you can use one of these, which is a nine millimeter snap off blade. This is exactly the same thing as what came out of the machine. Now here is the snap off blade. And if you notice, there are segments on these blades. So you need to snap off the first segment. Using a pliers, you're just going to break it right off. And that is the segment that you will reinsert into your machine to repair it. Now I'm going to reinsert the blade. Take the blade and make sure that the cutting edge is facing toward you. Now put the pointy side in and let it fall right into position just like that. At this point, you have to be very careful because your cutter can fall back out. Now I'm turning the entire mechanism over and we're going to focus on this area and reinstall this piece that we removed. You can roll it back into position underneath this arm, but it has to fall inside this piece. And snap into this little slot here. Now to secure that back into position, we want to take this other piece that we removed, reinstall it onto that little nub there, and then reinstall the screw. Now your mechanism and blade are securely back together. Now I'm going to maneuver the whole mechanism back into the machine. And I'm going to replace the single screw holding in. The cutting mechanism. Now it's time to maneuver the front cover back into position. And I want you to watch this area and this area because these are screws that you loosened and not removed. And these little uh, tabs need to go around both of those screws. Now it's time to maneuver the front cover back onto the back cover. And if you tilt it back just a little bit while supporting it with your other hand, you'll be able to snap the tabs gently back into position. Be patient as you're doing this. You don't want to break anything and you don't want anything to be out of alignment. This is the back part of the free arm and we're going to reinstall this screw. Here I am on the left side of the machine and you're going to snug up the screw that you loosened just enough to hold the front cover on.
Now you're going to replace this screw under the top cover of the machine on the right side. Snug it up nice and tight. This area is located under the top cover on the left side and as I zoom in you will see the screw that needs to be snugged up a little bit. That's all. Next replace the top cover. Gently maneuver it into position and replace the screw. The side panel is next to be replaced. Just gently maneuver it back into position and then reinstall the screw. With the machine lying on its back again, go ahead and maneuver the bottom panel back into position and replace these three screws. When you have one partially in, you can go and replace the other two. Take your time. You want to make sure the screws go in exactly as they came out. Tighten it right down into position. This concludes the repair portion of this video, but I wanted you to see the different supplies that we used. This is the number seven tool to take out the screws on your needle plate. This is the replacement blades that you'll need and a pliers to snap off a blade to insert into your machine. You may need a flashlight, serger tweezers, a number one screwdriver, and a regular number two uh, Phillips screwdriver. You'll also need a little bowl or a little cup to put any of your screws in so that you won't lose them and can replace them later. Now I'm going to run a piece of fabric through the machine and I'm going to use the auto cutter. Make sure to come to a complete stop before pressing the auto cutter. and it cuts perfectly. So there you have it, a video on repairing your cutter on a newer Stinger Quantum Stylus 9960. Remember, this is not for the original Stinger 9960s like my 2011 model. This is for later models because it's a completely different mechanism. Keep in mind, if you decide to do this repair, that it is very involved and you will need to have patience and take your time because you don't want to damage your machine. Have a happy creative day now. Bye!